My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. One thing to note about the bayous of southern Louisiana is that the water level can change on a dime. Occasionally, it'll be dry to the point you could traverse across the swamp, and other times, it will be flooded in water that would have you swimming to keep yourself afloat. So how do snakes survive in an environment that is prone to these changes? Well, they'll do one of two things. They'll either swim or climb. A snake normally known for blending in with ground foliage has nowhere to go but up when the swamp floods with water. This is the Texas rat snake, which is a type of western rat snake which you find pretty much mostly throughout Texas, but they range also pretty far north up into Kansas, pretty much all throughout uh, parts of the Midwest. And then right here where we are in southern Louisiana is the easternmost extent of their range. And it is just a massive snake too. I mean, it's pretty obvious that this snake can eat rats. I mean, it is easily about five, four and a half, maybe five feet. We need these guys in this ecosystem to keep rodent population to uh, under control and to keep diseases from spreading. Now as defense, one of the things they do is they may try to bite and another thing they may try to do is wiggle their tail. So you can see them wiggling it there. So these guys can be defensive, but it's pretty cold out today and he's getting any sort of light he can to of course warm up to go out and hunt. Um, it's just starting to warm up again. We had a huge cold front last night and so everything is just really cold and really slow moving and so he can't really get away because he just isn't warm enough to slither away very quickly. So I'm trying to be as slow and calm as I possibly can to keep this snake feeling as stress free as possible. This is a really common snake here in Louisiana and throughout their range. They're usually really common wherever you can find them. And uh, here, I don't think of it as as common a snake as the other snakes you find around here because this is a much more aquatic environment. These snakes usually are terrestrial, uh, meaning they live kind of on the surface of the ground. They blend in really well with piles of leaves, and they also will go up into trees, and that's actually where we found this snake. They're also really, really good climbers. Um, and normally, I don't think of big snakes like this as good climbers, but here in Louisiana, rat snakes are known for being in trees, especially in these aquatic environments. This is a completely non-venomous snake, not dangerous, I'm in no danger right now. Getting bit obviously is not something I want, but all it's gonna do is maybe cause a little bit of bleeding and that's probably gonna be the worst of it. These guys, when they're little, are a great food source for the venomous snakes that you find around here like cottonmouths. So lastly, do these snakes make good pets? I actually have a rat snake as a pet right now, but it is not nearly this big and it is not this species either. What I have is a Great Plains rat snake and this is quite a bit different. There's kind of two general types of rat snakes. There's the westerns and easterns and then there's the corns and Great Plains. This right here is kind of the eastern western rat snake complex. They are not nearly as common of pets as the other kinds of rat snakes that you get, which is gonna be the corn snakes. Of course, that's a very, very common pet snake. But that's not to say these aren't great pets either. These, they're just not nearly as common in captivity. However, I would love to see them in captivity more, um, but they are just kind of a more generic looking snake that, you know, gets to a decent size. So if you ever do see one that is captive bred, by all means, I think it would make a great pet snake. They're really good at being fed on a diet of frozen thawed rodents. And if you work with it enough, it should probably be a pretty tame snake and not be as uh, aggravated as this one is. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Western rat snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Snakes are capable of many things, and it takes an ecosystem like this that forces them to utilize these abilities to survive to evolve into the highly adapted snakes that we see living here now. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.